Hi everyone, Vacha here from Recording Studio 9 and thanks for joining me again today. And today we are going to test and evaluate and give my personal review on the ISK RF-5R vocal boot which is right behind me. might have seen several videos on YouTube on vocal boots um, you know demonstrating how they actually sound or may sound different when you're recording a vocal using the vocal boot with or without it and it's all pretty much personal opinion well I want to try to test it and give you a better idea of whether vocal boots do their job, are they worth their money or not by doing some more scientific testing of the vo vocal boot. Now the whole idea of having vocal boot is useful if your room is not well treated and there's a lot of reverberations and echo and reflections from the walls and the vocal boot basically tries to surround the mic recording microphone and try to stop those reflections coming back to the microphone and by doing that actually enhance the vocal recording now vocal boots you know range anywhere between I have found $80 on eBay to all the way up to $380, $480 on eBay at different brands now I purchased the ISK RF-5R from Swamp Industries um, and it cost about $180 and I could buy it cheaper from eBay but I thought since Swamp Industries have been you know quite um, supportive of me of my channel with other things and giving me discounts and so on I thought I'll try this one this way not only I'll be able to see how effective it is and if it is effective then it will actually support Swamp Industries with a claim that the vocal boot they sell actually does what it says it's supposed to do. Now this is how I'm going to actually plan and set up this um, experiment. I'm going to use my Behringer ECM8000 uh, omnidirectional reference microphone at a certain position in this room which I normally record my vocalist and I'm going to play a sound coming from a speaker which will be uh, audio sweep. And then we're going to look that audio sweep in a graph in Room EQ Wizard and see all of the waterfall effect which is basically reflections from the room. And then I'm going to put the vocal boot around the ECM8000 microphone and do the same test again. And then we're going to have a look and compare the graph in Room EQ Wizard and to see if those reflections actually are down or not. Now comparing the ISK RF-5R vocal boot some of the options are that you are able to adjust the sides to make them come in or out so that you get even closer of the effect of you know getting rid of all the reflections. This is really great if you are doing um, voiceovers and you want really dead sound with no reflections or no room effect as such. So I have my first test set up. Basically 
I have the microphone standing right there and that's connected to my audio interface and an output from my audio interface is feeding back to my speaker and this speaker is actually going to be my vocalist. Of course it's very hard to produce the same amount of energy and sound from a vocalist for testing purposes. That's why I'm using a speaker and the speaker will actually produce a frequency sweep of from let's say about maybe about 160 Hertz all the way up to maybe about 8 kilohertz. That's pretty much the range of a vocalist, you know, to a certain degree, you know, covering all the civilians and air as well. And then once we do the first test, I'm going to get the ISK vocal boot in front of it and do the same test again and compare the results. Now, one thing I need to make sure when doing this testing is the output SPL level of the speaker pink noise that is generating at the front of the microphone. Now usually vocal singers will may or may not be able to go up to maybe 100 dB. So I'm gonna have the uh, audio about 100 dB as SPL coming from the speaker right where the um, microphone is to generate that loudness I guess. I'll give it a try. I might start with 90 first and if that's not good enough I might go to 100 but uh, the final result will be the same for both cases. Now let's quickly have a look at the waterfall graphs in Room EQ Wizard that we got in four of those tests. I will have this file available on my website for download so you can open it up in your Room EQ Wizard and check it out yourself as well. But having a look the first time with no vocal boot and up to 8 kilohertz frequency range, 160 to 8 kilohertz, we have sort of waterfall spill going up to 140 milliseconds, which is pretty much normal for this room when I actually done some testing. It's not bad and the frequency range, I'm, we're not really looking at it because we're not really trying to find out what the frequency response of the speaker is um, at its position, but you know, it varies quite rangely. But because we're using the same speaker with the same settings, um, we should get uh, same frequency response, probably, maybe not, we'll have a look at that as well, but the waterfall will definitely make a difference. And if we go into the 12 kilohertz, again, we're pretty much looking about the same response from the speaker, and for the waterfall, again, we don't expect it to be any different, it's actually going up to 240 milliseconds waterfall. So it's taking about 240 milliseconds across the range from 600 hertz all the way up to 12 kilohertz for the sound to actually dissipate in this room without the vocal boot. So let's have a look at 160 hertz all the way to 8 kilohertz with the vocal boot on at the waterfall we certainly have much better response. It's actually down to 180 milliseconds from 240 milliseconds. So that's about 60 milliseconds less time for the signal to actually die. And again, it's the same frequency range anywhere between, um, I'll say 600 hertz all the way up to the 8 kilohertz 
um, range. That's how quickly it's actually dying. That's that's not bad. That's pretty good actually. So it did have some difference for sure. And if we have a look at the up to 12 kilohertz from 160 average, I'll say it's 180, uh, maybe more. There are some low positions. I'll say average will be about 200 milliseconds because there are some which are over at different frequencies. So not sure why would that be. But again, it definitely has gone lower uh, for sure. It used to be 240. Now it's down to about 180 to 200 milliseconds. So the vocal boot does have some effect. It's not major significant effect, um, but it definitely has some effect. You know, up to 60 milliseconds you were talking about. So it's definitely uh, has has the effect. And if you look at the uh, graph, yeah, it has had some graph changes as well. So we do have some peaks and some dips as well. So we have a dip at 800 hertz. We have another dip at 2 kilohertz. And then a little bit small dip about 4 to 5 kilohertz as well compared to our first one. And then if we look at the up to 8 kilohertz range, again, one third smoothing. Yep, 800 hertz and uh, 2 kilohertz and a little bit more about 3 to 4 kilohertz as well. So there's definitely some dips in there. Let's line them all up. So as we can see on the screen, without the vocal boot, we do have, you know, pretty much flat response from it. But when we actually have the vocal boot, we do have some dips at um, 800 as well as 2 kilohertz and a little bit between the 3 to 5 kilohertz range. Obviously, that's, those frequency ranges are being absorbed a lot more than without the vocal boot. Okay, let's get some vocals with the microphone and hopefully this will give you a bit more realistic perspective of what the vocal boot can do um, on, a, on a vocal. Well, let's give it a try with a vocal test to see how it actually sounds. And I've got the uh, MXL 550 microphone connected straight into my Yamaha AG03. And in both cases, it will be the same level. I'm just going to say a few, fur, um, few phrases and then sing a verse or something like that and see how it actually sounds. This is a vocal test without the vocal boot using the MXL 550 microphone. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie that's amore that's amore amore Testing the S's Testing the S's. So this time around, I do have the vocal boot around the microphone. So I will sing into it again and we'll see if it sounds any different, if it's any better or worse. So we'll find out. So here we go. This is a vocal test using the MXL 550 microphone surrounded by the ISK RF-5R vocal boot. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie that's amore that's amore amore Testing the S's Testing the S's. Well, let's do a final test of uh, using it, uh, the vocal boot with closed end, so that we completely sealing off the microphone from outside. So the only way the sound will come in straight from the front of the uh, of the boot. 
and for that um, I'm gonna read a couple lines from my records from Rock Around the Clock from Bill Haley um, it's not in its best condition um, I have to fix it I just haven't had a chance to fix it but the record is in very good condition um, it's printed in 1968 um, in England by Summit uh, Records so I'm just gonna read uh, just a sentence and then you'll be able to hear it to see how it sounds if you are doing um, sort of uh, voiceovers. I don't do a voiceover, I don't have a voiceover vocals and I do have a quite a heavy accent as well but this should give you some idea regardless. So uh, here we go. In the 1950s a restless offshoot of rhythm and blues took over the popular music scene leaving behind it a blazing trail of hit records and new artists. As with every particular type of music, rock and roll had its undisputed leaders who included Elvis Presley, Fats Domino, Eddie Cochran, Jerry Lee Lewis, Little Richard, Gene Vincent, Chuck Berry, and of course, Bill Haley. So there we have it. That's as much as testing I can actually do on the unit. And I think I've gone quite enough in detail testing the unit, the vocal boot. Again, it all depends on what you want to use it for. So using the vocal boot, we have discovered in the uh, graph that up to 60 millisecond of reflection has been reduced. So it definitely cuts down on reflections, so less reverberation. So depending on the style of music you are recording, if you want intimate vocals, if you've got really slow emotional vocals, then surrounding the microphone with the vocal booth, you definitely will get that effect because there's no reflections, more intimacy. But if you are recording pop, happy, dance, fun uh, vocalist, loud vocalist, then most of the time you probably won't need the vocal booth. But having it in your studio, it's worthwhile. So depending on who you're recording and what type of style of music you are recording, you can decide now that you know what the difference are, you can decide whether to use the vocal booth or not for that performance. Well, I hope this information was helpful for you. If it was, please make sure you give me the thumbs up and share it around so that other people who are trying to decide whether to uh, put the money towards a vocal booth or not, um, they be able to decide on that as well. And as for me, as my personal view, I think I will be keeping the vocal booth because uh, of the reasons that I just mentioned. So in case I get an intimate recording I need to do, I can use the vocal booth. If I need to do any voiceovers, which I have not really done, um, then I know I've got the tool to actually do voiceovers as well. I should also mention that Swamp Industries, which is where I purchased my ISK vocal booth from, actually offer 30 day money back guarantee. So if this experiment didn't work, I did not see any uh, difference between having the vocal booth or not, or it was not significant enough, I could actually return this unit right back to Swamp Industries and get my full money back. Uh, definitely going to be keeping it. It's worth the money. Um, you got to also find out there are different ranges, different prices, as I mentioned. They range anywhere bit from $80 to $480 that I have seen. That's Australian dollars that you can buy, but they all have different, uh, I guess, characteristics. So these are the pyramid shaped ones. There are also different foams. Some actually don't have any backing where this one actually has uh, aluminium backing to it. So it's more sturdy than the other ones who actually don't have anything at all. It's just a um, couple pieces of foam there. So it all depends how much money you and how much bud budget you have. But I think anywhere between 150 to $200 is probably the most that you really want to spend on a vocal booth because it's not something you want to use every single vocalist. If you have any comments, feel free to comment below. I'm more than happy to answer any queries you might have. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. Cheerio.